I read of an account of David Brainerd. You can go and check out on him. David Brainerd. He was one of the, he died at the age of 29. He was one of the first missionaries that went to India. When he went to in India, it was said that when he went there, because he couldn't speak their language, his only dependence was on prayer. He would pray in the forest, deep forest with wild animals. And the guy would give his whole life to prayer until he caught tuberculosis and pneumonia. This man would pray all day, all night. In fact, his first program he did, a drunkard was, in, was his interpreter. Because he knew he couldn't trust the drunkard. He prayed all day. When the drunkard began to translate, they were hearing his words as a spirit. And after he was done in that meeting, there was an outpour of the Holy Spirit. And the whole place was filled with the glory of God. And they started giving their life to Christ. There were wicked people in India that wanted to kill him. So they were told that this man, that skinny man has entered into the town and he's in the forest. So they went there with clubs to go and kill him. When they opened his small heart, they saw him on his knees, groaning in the spirit and praying for their salvation. And something surprising happened. They saw a very venomous serpent that was crawling close to him whilst he was praying. The guy was so much deeply rooted in his prayer that he didn't even know a serpent was there. He didn't even know enemies had come to kill him. He was praying and the venomous serpent rose up and looked at him face to face. Got close to his lips and the serpent went back and ran away. When they saw that, for that serpent to look at you and run, it must be God. And they began to call him God. That evening when he did the program, all of them gave their life to Christ. Hey! In fact, one time it was snowing and this man prayed so much in the snow that his, he began to sweat in snow and his sweat melted all the snow on his body. How do you pray in snow and sweat? That means your prayer must be that intense and powerful. You know his last prayer before he died? He died at the age of 29. He said, I long to be a flame of fire, continually glowing in the service and building up of Christ's kingdom to my last and dying breath. His prayer was answered. Today, his diary is what is speaking for him today. John Wesley read his diary. William Carey read his diary and today there was a man that read his diary and went into missionary work because of the zeal of his prayer life. Time won't permit me to speak about the Moravian brothers. These were men who condemned themselves to intercession and missions. They went into a cave and they hid there. For 24 hours a day they were in prayer. They ran in prayer shifts. They prayed 24 hours a day, 7 days a week for over 100 years. They were the ones who bet almost all the revival we are hearing today. It was their prayer that bet it. 24 hours a day for 100 years. A man called Leonard Robin Hill. That man prayed 14 hours a day. In fact, it was said of him that when you are having a conversation with him, he can look at you and ignore you and go back to go and pray without apologizing. This is a man that said, eat little, sleep little, and pray more. That was his motto. There was a man called Praying Hyde. One great man of prayer. This is a man who prayed. He spent his entire life in prayer. He prayed until his heart shifted from the left to the right. They went for a checkup at the hospital. They told him the only way he can come back is when you become silent for about four years. He looked at the doctor and said, okay, thank you. When he left, he went back to go and pray. He prayed until the heart shifted back again. This was a man who spent whole day groaning for the salvation of souls. It got to a time he prayed for one soul a day. So he says, Lord, give me one soul today. He goes to minister and the soul comes. For one full year, 365 days, he won one soul every single day. The next year, he, he said, Lord, give me two. The whole 365, he won two souls every single day. The next year, he said three. The next year, he said four. So he was winning four souls a day. And now he started doing crusades. One time, he returned from India back to U.S., there was a preacher who was doing a program. The preacher did a program. Many people didn't show up in the program. And they invited him. He went to pray and he came to the meeting. The glory of God was so much on him that people didn't even know. But the glory attracted people. And that day, when praying height entered the meeting, the whole room was filled. And many people gave their life to Christ. What is your presence doing in the spirit realm? His presence brought new souls to be saved. Why? Because of prayer. Because of prayer. There was a time in one of the meetings in India. The man prayed to the extent that he just lifted his voice weeping. And he says, oh, heavenly father. That was the only word he said. The glory of God rusted the whole building. And that whole place became a place of revival. That's praying hide. There's a great man called Zacharias Tanifumun. 
This man is an African, so I'm proud to talk about him. This man was a man who was giving to prayer. In fact, he spent 16 hours with God. This was a man who said, if you're a preacher and you preach one hour, you are not worthy of your calling. He says, one hour prayer is for your personal survival as a Christian. If you have a wife, it is one hour 30 minutes. If you have children, it is two hours. If you want to do the real work of God, it starts from three hours. That was his criteria. He said, if you're a minister, you don't pray eight hours, you, are not, you can't be called a full-time pastor. That was his criteria. This was a man who prayed until he became so Christ-like. You know how much he gave us tied to God? 92.5%. His income, his royalties, his salary, he gave 92.5. You know his prayer. His prayer was that before he dies, he wants to give 99.9% to God. This was a man who organized prayer retreats, prayer crusades. When we are doing crusade for salvation, he was doing prayer crusades. Between 7 to 40 days, anytime they meet, it was prayer. They do prayer sages. You know prayer sage? They, they organized a prayer meeting from between 24 hours to 100 hours non-stop and he was the one leading it. He prayed until Jesus appeared to him and said, you have been promoted. I am taking you to 50 nations. Listen, when you pray, God will promote you. As I speak to you now, they are in over 150 countries. His daughter is called Ruth. The, the man was also a fasting machine. I met the daughter some months ago. I was told that the daughter was around, so I went to visit the daughter. The daughter this year has done her 60th 40 day fast. Are you listening to me? 60th 40 days fast on water. And when I met this woman, the holiness and the aura around her, me, I couldn't talk. I went to sow a seed into her life. When I sowed the seed into her life on behalf of her dead father, after she received the seed, she was apologizing to God that I have thought of her more highly than she ought to be. And she spent 15 minutes apologizing to Jesus. I was feeling like a fish out of the sea. I went to your patch of Full of holiness. They've done one meeting in India. They gathered 600,000 crowds. 600,000. How are they doing it? They are doing it by prayer. She says she's going to take me to bring me to Cameroon next year, hopefully. In Cameroon, 14-year-old children are fasting 21 days on water. 18 years are fasting 40 days. Some are doing their sixth. Some are doing their seventh. And you are doing your... <laughs> you are doing your six to two. Even that one with many afflictions. Telling the Lord, 1.30 p.m., there was a man called Father Nash who was one of the greatest intercessors for Charles Finney. This man was, in fact, he was a pastor of a church and they voted against him because they thought he was an old man and he developed an eye problem so he couldn't preach again and he gave the rest of his life to prayer. So he submitted himself to Charles Finney who was a younger preacher by then. So what happens is that three weeks before Charles Finney enters a town, he will enter there, use his own money to pay for a lodging place. There was one time he didn't get a place. He took a woman's like, uh, uh, garage, paid 25 cents, stayed there for three days. He stayed there for two weeks, groaning in the spirit. Souls, ah, ah, ah. souls, souls, that way, that same way. Uh, in fact, one old lady saw Charles Finney when he entered. He says, there is a man in my garage. He has been on the floor for days in the same position. Come and check if everything is okay with him. And Charles Finney said, that man carries the spirit of supplication. He will groan in the spirit. Do you know that in Charles Finney's meeting, because of the intercession of Father Nash, they won 100,000 souls per day. Per day, 100,000 souls. It was believed that all the souls they won, 98% of them never backslid because of the power of this man's prayer. He had a friend called Abel Clary, who was also an intercessor, who, who learned to groan and to pray. Why am I sharing these things with you? Because you need to see this man of history to ignite. It was man of history that ignited me. That's what I'm telling you. He will groan for many days at one place. He doesn't move. Pray. It was said of Abel Clary that it, it, there were times he would groan for three days non-stop. And when he gets up, he can't walk again. Then he will lie down on the floor again and continue praying. 
One time they went for a program and they came for lunch and they told him to give opening prayer. He looked at the food like that. He says, I can't be here. I can't be here. I can't be here. You, you can't be here. <laughs> I can't be here. And then he, he pushed the food away and he entered the room and started groaning for souls. Lord, save more. Save more. And his brother went to the room. He was shocked. He says, call me Charles Finney. When Charles Finney came, he says, Charles, pray, pray. And Charles Finney started praying. After some time, Charles realized that he couldn't stand it and he left him. And he came to eat. He died at the age of 37. And you see, you'll be shocked. These people, we never saw them in the limelight. But when we get to heaven, all the 100,000 souls Charles Finney was saved, was winning per day, they are going to be charged into his account also. You know the amazing thing? The amazing thing is that these people are men like you and I. They were busy like you and I. But they gave themselves to prayer. I read of a man called Ian Bounds. This was a man that his minimum prayer was four hours. Four hours. That was his minimum. His minimum prayer was four hours. He prayed hours until when he was 45. His face was looking 85. He was a Methodist pastor. So if you have a Methodist, listen to me carefully. A Methodist pastor. He wrote 11 books. Only two was published before he died. After he died, the rest of the 11 was published. Up to now, apart from the Bible, his books are the books you can, if you want to understand prayer, it is his books that almost every other book make reference to when it comes to prayer. He's a father, a general of prayer. You can go and look for his books. He's called Ian Bounds. A man called John Welch said, I have, he says that if I fail to spend 8 to 10 hours with God, I have a bad day. I'm sure some of you are looking at me. Man, you have preached almost 2 hours. Uh -huh. <laughs> Apostle Paul, go and read the book of Acts. He preached until someone slept and fell down. <laughs> and he continued preaching. He finished preaching. When he was done, he resurrected the person. If he like die, <laughs> we'll raise you back to life. Yeah, I can't quance him. Hallelujah. We'll pray. I'm coming. We'll pray some hot 30 minutes. Then we'll I'll prophesy to some few people. Then we, we are you enjoying this thing at all? There was a woman called Mother Howard. She was a widow who later became a single woman because her husband died. What are you doing with your singleness? This woman prayed 7 to 14 hours a day. She wakes up at 4 a.m. every single day and she'll pray from 4 to, to 8 a.m. When she's done, she takes her breakfast. Then she goes to visit people. Then she prays two hours from about 10 to 12. Then she goes and visits someone again. 2, 8, 2 p.m. She comes back home to come and take lunch. When she's done, from 2 p.m. till evening and sometimes all night to the next day, she'll be in prayer. She was praying that full gospel churches during that time should flood the whole cities and towns where she was. And truly before she died, all those places was flooded with churches. That was her assignment. What was your assignment? Students, all your friends who are living any kind of life, will you put their name on your prayer list? And when you wake up, you mention their name, you say, Mildred, your soul is not for the devil. I take you for Jesus Christ. I declare in the name of Jesus, you will not be lost. In the name of Jesus, I take all the students from UPSA. I take all the students from Legon. I declare the devil will not exert on them. Father, we take over their lives, their hearts, their souls. We command them to love you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And you are doing that for days, for months, for years. Every one hour, every two hours, you are praying. All the times so you are using to watch Spartacus. You are using for traveling the spirit. Palatanga. Abina to come and tell Lord, touch their lives in the name of Jesus. May they not enjoy the pleasure of sin in the name of Jesus. As you are doing that in the spirit, you are building, you are releasing, you are you are you are transacting in the spirit. John Knox, the Queen of England, said, I fear the prayers of John Knox than all the armies of Europe put together. Why? This was the man who said, give me Scotland or I die. That was his passion. Last year when I caught the fire, three months I was praying seven hours a day and I said, Lord, give me souls or I die. And the Lord looked at me and said, die. <laughs> and I stopped praying. I said, then you bought wine. 
John Knox prayed this prayer for 20 years. You have prayed for three months. You said, give me so so I die. Son, die. And I stopped that prayer. I've never prayed that prayer again. Hallelujah. David Livingston, one of the missionaries that was sent to Africa. The man prayed before every missionary journey. One of his servants, one day was going to look for him in his heart. When he went, he had died on his knees in prayer. How will you die? On top of another man. One time there was, there was a story of one rich man. They went to see him dead. Because he got a student that the capacity was not up to. What a shame. Praying pacing. The man prayed until his name was changed to praying pacing. He was also found with Carlos' knees. And this praying pacing, amazingly, his prayer room, the floor was made of wood. He prayed on that same position for years. Before he died and they checked his room, his knees had made holes in the wood. Hey! We are going to meet these people in heaven. Apostle Joseph Babalola. I read one account. The man prayed until his sweat became a pool where he was. Are you listening to me? His sweat became a pool. It was filled with water. His sweat and was kneeling inside. Where is that passion from? What? How? How are they doing this? They are human beings like us now. He went for frequent 40 days fast. One time he, was, he returned from a 40 days fast and they told him that it's time to eat. Bless the food for us. He stretched his hands over the food. He prayed two hours, three hours, four hours, eight hours, ten hours, fifteen hours, twenty hours, twenty-four hours, twenty-five hours, twenty-eight hours, thirty hours, thirty-two hours. He was lost in the presence. When he woke up, he saw that it was morning and people were going up and down to work. We changed clothes. And when he came to his senses, he was like, ah, what's going on here? He says, it is morning. I said, I was going to show you a picture. This man was praying in the wilderness like Jesus and he got thirsty because he was there for days. He went close to a rock and commanded water to come from the rock. And water came out from the rock and he drank. Till today, the rock is still there. I don't know if you can have the video. The rock is still there. The water is still there. Apart from Moses, this Joseph Babalola was the one who commanded water out of rock. One day he blessed the river. After blessing the river, anybody that touches the river got healed. Within less than days, the whole river became dry because people fetch it away. The power of praying, man. Listen, you can change your family on your knees. You can change that marital issue on your knees. Will you change that conviction and start to take the world, take your husband, take your family, take your siblings, take your roommates by prayer? George Muller, you can go and read about him. He had an orphanage of over 2,000 people. He vowed and swore never to beg anybody for arms. Early in the morning, he would gather all the students, all the children in the orphanage, and tell them that get your bowls ready for breakfast when there is no food. He went pray for hours and come back. One time after he was done that they were sitting down, he was waiting for God to bring food. How? And a truck driver who was carrying milk and cake to one town, his truck got broken down. And between the number of days it would take for him to take the food back to where it was, it would have been destroyed. So he came to park in front of them and said, ah, do you need any milk? Because this milk cannot last. He says, we actually, 2,000 of us need it. And they fed other children. He fed his orphanage three times a day without asking anybody for money. By the end of his ministry, when he did the calculation of the provision God brought to him, it was 7.2 million pounds. I'm talking about 18 something. Everything by prayer. Every need he has God in prayer. Never beg anybody for money. He, listen, can you come to a place where you say you never beg anybody for money? I told myself that. I won't beg anybody for money. I will ask God for everything. There was one time I knelt down after praying for long hours and I asked God for a need. I needed some money. By the time I finished praying, in less than 30 seconds, someone sent me money. And I was like, this thing is real. The reason why you are not seeing that result is because your only focus is on asking things. It doesn't work that way. Meet God's needs by praying God's prayers and God will meet your need by answering them. <laughs> 